Hey, what's up, YouTube family? This is Pastor Napoleon Mon, founding pastor of New Vision Christian Church right here in the great city of Decatur, Illinois. We want to thank you for tuning in to this video. Listen, the Word of God has something for you. You will be enlightened and you will be encouraged. So on behalf of myself, Lady Tina, and the New Vision family, it's not by accident that you're tuning in. It's by divine providence because God has a message for you. Stay tuned as we come back after this message and we have some more information for you. God bless you. We'll see you soon. And our text, verse 35, said, And she conceived again and bore a son and said, This time I will praise the Lord. Therefore, she named him Judah. Brothers and sisters, we would like to preach this afternoon as the Spirit shall guide with this thought in our minds. I need to throw up. Tell somebody in your section, I need to throw up. Amen. I need to throw up. Have you, have you ever experienced, have you ever experienced a time in your life where you had to deal with something or someone where it made you sick? Yeah, have, you, have you experienced a time where you had, you had given something your best shot in Without prevail, you, you didn't succeed. You've given it all you got, and without prevail, you did not succeed in that venture. Have you ever felt like throwing in the towel? Yeah, have you ever felt like throwing up your hands and saying, I'm sick of this, this is it, I'm done, no more, I quit, it's over. Do you know what it feels like to be so sick of your problems and your pains and your pitfalls of life that it makes you sick and tired of just being sick and tired. Yeah. Amen, amen. Maybe, maybe you have been in a situation where you, you felt so hopeless that the only thing you could possibly do was quit and never look back. My Lord, the, the, the plethora of quandaries in your life and what life has presented you you have it pushed you to the point where you just want to throw up and you just say, I, I, I've never felt like this. I don't want to feel like this anymore. And I just want to throw up. Well, lately, my brothers and sisters, you're not by yourselves because I have been hearing and I've been watching. I've been watching and hearing how the enemy of God has been attacking the church and the people of the household of faith. Yeah, the enemy of God has been attacking the people of God, our families, or some aspect of our lives in such a way that we will become so sick and that we want to just throw up. You feel like you just want to give up and let the enemy have the victory, but you know within your heart of hearts that that's not what you're supposed to do. Can I get a witness? Well, beloved, you may be here this afternoon and you have been so sick of something that it made you want to just throw up and I'm not talking about being sick of the flu or some ailment or being nauseated. No, don't get me wrong. Now, there are some things we go through in life that makes us sick to our stomachs. Can I have some help in here? Amen. You should be encouraged to know that that's not abnormal to feel that. Yeah, as a matter of fact, even God gets sick to the point where he wants to throw up. Yeah, we in good company then, amen? amen. Scripture bears witness to it. Listen to what he said to the angel of the church of Laodicea in Revelations 3 and 16. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Lord, have mercy. I, I, and wants to throw up. Can I get a witness? John the Revelator, he said, he tells us that God can't stomach their half-hearted attempt in serving him. That's a whole nother sermon. We'll plow that road another day. Listen, if you ever been so sick to the point where you want to throw up, that your body gets to the point where it can't handle the ailment or the virus, watch this, I've learned something very interesting. It will respond the way it has been created to respond. Come on, walk with me. Watch this. Your body was designed to detect things that have the potential to harm it and to make you sick. So because of the way your body was designed, you have been built with a defense mechanism within you. Watch this. If something is attacking your body from within to do it harm, watch this, it can call 
Yeah, will you agree? Yeah. So watch this. Every day, people grow through the toughest of situations, and every day, people have to decide if they're going to throw in the towel and give up, or if they are going to stand up and take the victory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a fact of life, y'all. It's a fact of life that people, no matter who you are, where you come from, or what side of the track in which you live, you have to face trials and tribulations in this life. Amen. Yeah, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what your occupation may be. No, it doesn't matter what how well your portfolio reads. If you are living on this earth, here it is, you will have to face some times of tough tribulations, some times of turmoil in your life. And you have, you have gotten to that point where you have been sick and tired of going through things. It just makes you want to throw up. Do I have any help in here? Well, see, you have, you, you will get, get to the point in your life, my brothers and sisters, where you are going to feel like that and you have lost all hope and you want to just throw up and throw in the towel. You you know, you, you have decided, I, I just don't want to do it anymore. Oh I just don't like this feeling that I'm having when I'm going through the times that I am facing right now. Amen. They feel as if their situation is never going to get better. Oh Have you ever been there? Yeah. Well, we stopped by this afternoon to give somebody a word of hope and encouragement on today. Because maybe you feel, you don't feel so good about your life this afternoon. Maybe you don't feel so good about the situation you're facing right now. Maybe you're going through something and it's not uh, pleasing to you to have to deal with the situation that you're facing. Well, you came to the right place because we have a word of encouragement. The Lord has some lessons to, for us to learn from looking at the life of Jacob's first wife, Leah, and we can glean from her life on how to deal with things that make you want to throw up. Are oh, you going to come around with me? Here it is. Is there anybody in here who is sick and tired of being sick and tired to the point where you feel like if I could just throw this away, if I could just throw this up, I'll feel much better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Are you, are your circumstances making you sick? It may be a family member that's making you sick or the devil is making you so sick because he's causing so much turmoil in your life. Are you sick of the problems and troubles coming your way? Is there anybody in here besides me who can say that I have so many problems that I really just want to get rid of? Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Well, if you're sick of the problems you're facing, <laughs> if you're sick of being in financial turmoil, if you are sick of the affliction that's ailing your body, if you are sick of the enemy stealing your joy, if you are sick of the enemy trying to kill your dreams and aspirations, if you are tired of the storms of life, you, if you are going through so much there and you just want some relief, well, we're here to tell you that all you have to do is just throw up. Well, I'm happy already, but I got to give you some text. I got to give you some text. Come on, walk with me just for a little while. The text teaches us, watch this, that when you are going through things or when the going gets tough, the tough throw up. Yeah, yeah. When the devil is beating down your door, when you need to take a relief or you need to just sit, sit back, you take a page out of Leah's book. I love this text because watch this. Bear with me here because I have to give you some context and some historical uh, context of the text and not only that, some cultural context of the text so you can understand the context of the text. Amen. Come on, walk with me. Watch this. When you examine the previous verses in the chapter, you come to understand that Jacob had come to the land where his uncle Laban was living. Now here it is. He ran into some sheep herders and he asked them from whence they came. Now, understanding, now Jacob, you know, had a brother, and he tripped his brother out of his birthright, and so he was on the run from his older brother. So he ran down to the land in which his uncle, his mother's brother, was living. So he ran down to the land of where Uncle Laban was living. And so in going to the land, he ran into some sheep herders, and the sheep herders ran and said to him, well, he said, hey, do you a man named Laban. And let me want to nod before they said, yeah, we know Laban. Laban from down the way. Yeah, we know Laban. As a matter of fact, here comes this daughter, Rachel, and some sheep, and she's coming to feed and water the sheep. He said, okay. He ran into Rachel. 
Rachel is the younger daughter of Jacob. He's a younger daughter of Laban. Jacob saw Rachel and lost his mind. Now, brothers, I, I, I know you can help me out here. Have you ever seen that dime piece that just made your knees fall? <laughs> I mind sitting right there. Sister, maybe, maybe the sisters can help me out. Have you ever seen that tall drink of water that, that just made you just want to lose your mind? Well, you, now you understand Jacob's plight because Jacob saw Rachel and Jacob said, well, I'll be here. What a specimen of a woman this is. So let me cut across the field. You, you know the story. You've read it before. So Jacob goes and says, hey, Rachel, my uncle is Laban, which is your dad, which is your daddy. So take me to the house and let me talk to mom for a little while. So now you get fast forward a few chapters, and now you come to understand Laban, who has a daughter named Rachel, who is the younger daughter, and a daughter named Leah, who is the oldest. I told you I had to give you some contextual and cultural context so you can understand the text. Now here it is. Jacob wanted to marry Rachel, <coughs> but culturally, it was not appropriate for the younger daughter to get married before the elder's daughter. If you go back and read the Bible, the Bible says, and it puts it in this fashion, Rachel was beautiful in her form and figure. But Leah had a lazy eye. Come in. Leah wasn't that attractive. But she had a good heart. And because she was the oldest daughter, it was customary that she would get married first. So Jacob said, well, listen, um, I, I really love to be with Rachel. So if you don't mind, will you give me Rachel as my wife? And he says to Jacob, Laban says to Jacob, well, listen, nephew, I, I, I really don't want to do you wrong. Your family, I want to take care of you. But listen, how about you work for me seven years? And after you work and labor for me seven years, I'll give you Rachel. Now, you have to understand something about the text. For any man who want to work seven years for a woman and not get paid, that woman had to be beautiful. I'm not making it up, it's in the text. So he agreed with Laban, I'm going to work for Rachel for seven long years. We going somewhere, come on right with me. I just need to give you the context. So then, after the seven years, fast forward if you will, after the seven years, here comes Jacob going to Uncle Laban and said, hey, I've completed my task, give me my wife. Now culturally, back then, a Jewish wedding will take place uh, during the course of a week. And so they would celebrate, they would have a reception for a whole week. So now, Laban says to Jacob, I'll give you rent, but go ahead and celebrate, and then at the end of the week, I'll give you your wife. Now, during this celebration, I love this, during this celebration, catch this please, they will celebrate with drinking and festivities. I'm not making it up, it's in the Bible. Remember when Jesus went to the wedding in Canaan? Yes. And he turned the water into wine? Yes. So it was customary that they would celebrate with drinking wine. So now watch this, during this week, Jacob celebrating, the whole family celebrating, call all the cousins in, they having a good time. He gets drunk. Then at the end of the celebration, he says, now nah, I want my wife. Here's where the plot fits. Laban doesn't send Rachel in, he sends Leah into the tent. Jacob lays with Leah. Laban says it's not customary that the young girl gets married before the older girl. So here it is, when Jacob goes into his tent, he's already tipsy a little bit. Leah, I need you to go in and lay with him. It's all in the text. So then Leah goes in, Jacob wakes up in the morning. What? <laughs> Leah, what you doing here? Where's Rachel? The one that I worked seven years for. Go talk to Lady, your mom. Watch this, we're going somewhere. So now, fast forward, Leah lays with Jacob. Jacob lays with Leah. Text 
says, Rachel was barren. Leah conceived. Watch this. The text says, Leah was the unloved one. But she was given by culture to this man that didn't love her. So now by culture, he had a responsibility to Leah because now he's laid with Leah and she conceived. Boy, here's what a plot thing. I, I know some of them so opera folk wish they had a plot like this. So now watch this. Leah then gives him a son. We in the text. Come on, go with me. So now Leah gives Jacob a son. Catch this. Some said that she wasn't that attractive, but six in one hand, half a dozen in another. No matter what, the text says Jacob didn't love her. He loved Leah. He loved Rachel, not Leah. So now Leah was the one, watch this, that the God showed favor and he opened up her room. Watch the text, the text bear witness to it. The text says Rachel was there and now Leah is the man who tricked me. Isn't it hilarious? that Jacob's name means trickster. He tricked his brother out of his inheritance, and now the table has been turned, and now all of a sudden his uncle Laban tricked him. That's a whole nother sermon. But watch this. So now, here he is, goes to uncle Laban. Listen, you need to make this right, man. I work for Rachel. He said, I tell you what, go ahead and finish this week out, this celebration, and then I'll give I need you to work another seven years. She had to be a dime piece because he signed on to work another seven years for the same woman that he already worked seven years for. You talking about dedication and determination. Jacob said, I want Rachel so bad that I'm willing to work another seven years to get her. Now watch this.
to take the will and drive, you will always, he will always lead you to the place of promise, peace, and prosperity. Leah blessed Jacob with a son. She called him Reuben. Then, watch this, let's cut across the field. She gave birth to a second son. Second son, she named him Simeon. Somebody say Simeon. Simeon. Catch this. His name means hearkening or act. So she had prayed to the Lord. Watch Leah now. And this was her answer. He then gives her another son. Now remember, Rachel and Leah are sisters married to the same man. He's laying with both of them. But ain't nobody having no babies in the house but Leah. The one that was unloved, he is the favorite one. How many know favor ain't fair? Favor is not fair. So she has another child. She names him Simeon. I got to cut across the field. I keep you too long, but there's so much meat in this text. So come here. You have the Lord looking on her affliction with Reuben, then the Lord answering her prayer with Simeon. Somebody gonna catch this in a minute. That sounds like favor on your life to me. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I stand in need of some favor from the Lord. So watch this. Then she has another son. <laughs> God has opened up her room. He's blessed her in such a way that she has another son. Watch this. And she names him Levi. Now these names might sound familiar to you that study your Bible because these are all coming out of the tribe of Israel. Jacob, who wrestled with the Lord and he changed his name to Israel. These are all the descendants of the Jews, the promise, the remnant of those that will inherit. Oh, yeah, that's another time, but I got to give it to you because it's so good. <laughs> then he says, you have had another child. I named him Levi. Watch this. That name means joining or reconciling. Leah says, now that you've heard my affliction, you
Because if you continue to read, you look in verse, in chapter 30, you find that, watch this, Reuben, now who is five years old, goes out in the field, watch this, and he begins to, he picks some of these, uh, these, these fruit that was of the land, and let me put it in my for you. Anybody know what those mandarins look like? So this fruit was in the context of a mandarin. This was some type of new fruit that they wasn't accustomed to. But Reuben, the son goes out, who was Leah's oldest son, goes out and find the text that they're mandrakes. Goes out and find these mandrakes and he brings them back to his mother Leah, Rachel, because of the land that they lived in, Rachel knew that these fruit was, it was said that they were fruit of fertility. Watch this. Leah's oldest boy, Reuben, went out and found him, brought him back to his mom. Rachel goes to Leah and says, hey, that was a man. Look here. How about you give me some of the mandrakes that your son just brought you? Leah says to Rachel, let me mother and for girl, you must be crazy. You that took my husband, you got what I want, you got the love that I want from a man that I want, and now you want to come and take the fruit my son gave? Yeah. Rachel says, this it. Because she thought that they were fruit of fertility. I tell you what, I allow Jacob to come and sleep with you tonight. That's why when you go read the text, you come down and say, Rachel had to move out because there's no way that she lived with Rachel would have sent Jacob to his own house. Yeah. Yeah. Guess that. <laughs> so now, here we are. Leah says, no, my baby brought them to me. No, that's all right. Here it is. Leah now says, God, you heard my affliction. I'm coming around the mountain now. You heard my affliction. You answered my prayers. And then you gave me the thing that sealed me to make my husband love me. Even though he knows, but he has to take care of me. Tell me that ain't fair. Yeah, yeah. Then the text says, in verse 35, here's where we want to hang our hat. Don't miss this. This brings us to her fourth son. Three sealed to be taken care of. This brings us to her fourth son. Catch this and we're going out of here. Leah conceives and gives birth to the fourth son. The Lord looks on her afflictions with favor, hears her prayers, and then he gives her the need that she needs to fellowship with her husband. Don't miss this because here's the shot. Leah named her fourth son, don't miss this, Jude. Right. Thank you, <laughs> The word used in Genesis chapter 29, verse 35, in the original language, means Yah. <laughs> it is a verb, which is an action thing. Wait a minute. 
until you come out your storm. Don't wait until the situation is over. While you're in your storm, go ahead and praise the Lord. Because you know his power is almighty. You know his word is power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got to let you go. I got to let you get out of here. No more. Don't want you to miss it. Because some of y'all still miss the shout. Because the song is declared in the main second song. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto his name. Some of us come to church and act like we at a game show. Well, baby, I'm here to tell you, this ain't we or no me. You say, God, if you give me a new job, I'll run around the church. No, baby, this ain't will or no deal. How about you run around the church so you can get a new job? The word praise is mentioned over 300 times in the Holy Spirit. The first time it's ever mentioned in the Bible is in our text. And it is a word that means an uh, action thing that's not going to do something. So all I know to do is y'all. I may not know a whole lot of scripture, but I know how to throw my hands up. I know how to lift my hands and sing praises unto the Lord. I may not sing but I know how to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Oh, he laughed. See, God is looking for some authentic worshipers, some authentic praisers that's going to lift them up in spite of what they're going through, in spite of their situation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got to let you go. The word praise. Can I have some of y'all? Eventually, you got to go back and read what's that? Eventually. 
when you study scripture, you come to find out Judah is a tribe in which we get our Messiah, and his name is Jesus. It's no coincidence that Jesus came from the lineage of those that praise his father. Y'all just missed that. Jesus came from the descendants of those that were named Yah. channel, the New Vision Christian Church. We're going to have something very exciting for you as you continue to pray with us. And I want you to invite you to come out and worship with us as well. We are right here at Hope Academy inside the cafetoria every Sunday, 12 noon, high noon. So come on out and be a part of this dynamic worship service. And listen, our midweek service is at 7 o'clock on Wednesday nights right here at Hope Academy. So I hope that you come out and be a part of this. I want to personally invite you to come and be a part of this worship service. Personally invite you to be a part of our midweek service. Listen, we love you here at New Vision Christian Church. On behalf of myself, my lovely wife, Lady Tina, and the whole entire New Vision family, we thank you for tuning in. God bless you, my friends, and see you soon.